Good afternoon. I'm sure you've seen the uh, main football news this morning. Is it true that you're ready to bring Erling Haaland here? We do understand that Manchester City are in pole position to sign him. There's going to be lots of competition, isn't there, in the, in the summer? As far as strikers are concerned at the moment, is he one of the most promising, one of the best you've seen? No answer to your question. No answer to Erling Haaland? As your opinion of him as a, as a striker? No questions. No answer about these questions. Did I have a uh, concern and business in my head right now to think about what is going to happen in this club next season. As a, as a side, your Manchester City side, have you recognised the need for uh, a major recognised striker? Uh, we are playing with a good striker this season. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future. It's next season, so I'm not going to talk. You know, when you are not common coming here, but for a long time, for many years, I never talk about transfer windows, especially when we are playing for incredible things still this season. Well, can I take you back to um, Saturday then? There appeared to be a lot of fans that weren't happy with your team selection on, on Saturday. Can you understand their frustration and do you have any regrets about the weekend? No. I understand opinions for my fans, of course. Uh, they they have all my respect and credit to 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 give the opinion. So, and my selection is for many reasons. I've done it. Was it purely physical reasons? You you, no. you you did say to me in the press conference last week ahead of the Atletico semi-final that players don't worry about semi-finals and fitness because it's a semi-final. They they're ready. Yeah, they were ready. That's true. But Khan was already. Kevin was not ready. Kundogan was not ready. So I understand everything. I understand your your questions. But I was in the hotel after the game with Atletico Madrid. I was in the hotel in the um, in London. I spoke with my staff, but especially with my doctors, with my physios, and I listened what they said to me. And after we take a decision, so I have a lot of info that you don't have. And after that, I take a decision. That's all. But oh. of course, if we were tired, we would not run the second half, but we were running the first half. Because football is not about physicality. It's about the momentum, how you are here. And in that moment, there are moments that you are better, sometimes you are not. And this is the reason why. I have a lot of info that for not that game, especially for many games, I ask a lot with my 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 staff about what is the situation about this player, the other one, the mood, the situ this, for many reasons. And after I take the decisions, uh, this is the reason why. Are they ready tomorrow, Kyle Walker, Kevin De Bruyne and Ruben Diaz? Uh, Kyle, no. The other ones, uh, they are better. We'll, we'll take the decision tomorrow. Hi, Pep. Um, you've got Brighton, they've won at Spurs, they've won at Arsenal, so how dangerous a team do you think they are? They don't need to win in Arsenal and uh, Spurs, of course, is a good aim for, but they don't need to do it to to get credit. I think for the past, you know, every time we play against Brighton from Graham Potter, so the opinion I have with with him is uh, is uh, having a lot of admiration for a, a team like them, how they play, the way they play, the results they got. Uh, yeah, good test for us. The title race is shaping up to be very close. Some people will see it as going to the final day. What excites you most about the title race and the challenge ahead? Well, the challenge is the same like uh, last two weeks, or last, yeah, last two, three weeks. So it's the same, one point ahead, and uh, we are going to play every game a final to give opportunity to play another one, another one, until the end. We are going to, to challenge and until the end. We're going to fight. That's for sure. Until the end, we'll try to play good and get results. Are they the best kind of challenges for, for a coach? Sorry. Are they the best kind of challenges for a coach? A title race like this? I love to. Uh, the same. I'd like it to play semi-finals if I can. To be going to play the semi-final Champions League. And yeah, it looks like everything is not enough. It's everything for granted. But uh, I have a different opinion about that. So arrive in the stages and, and do things that we can improve. But do things that is. Amazing what we are doing, knowing the situation that we have right now in the, for, 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 for the problems that we had in this season, for many, many parts of the season, uh, made me so satisfied. And I said, OK, uh, analyze, or remember what we are as a team with the strength points and, and go forward. Thanks, Pat.
Hi, Pep. Just just on on the injury situation. How long is Kyle likely to be out for? And is Ruben Diaz uh, fit for tomorrow's game? Well, Ruben training really good today. Yesterday alone as well. But we cannot forget, had been seven weeks off. No play one minute. So it's not when you are recovering and after you need the tempo. But Ruben is intelligent. Ruben is a you know is a guy like a, like a knows. Uh, knows control, he knows his body, uh, you know his tempo, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, we are more than the life. He's back, uh, so Nathan making crowd contribution, and I mean John play a lot of minutes this season, especially I mean it's important to have three, four good central defenders, and Ruben is so important for us. And can you give a, a time scale on Kyle Walker? Uh, no, don't know yet. For tomorrow, is not able. For the rest of the games, we will see how we react. Uh, his ankle. And I know you, you speak a lot about you can only control things involving your team and your players and your matches. But when you have a game like tonight's game, Which game? do you do you watch it and kind of observe how the game's going to go because you know that Either they will drop points and that puts you in a better position, or they will get points. They'll go above you in the table, and do you just walk away from it? Or how do, how do you? No, we'll watch, watch the game as game. a fan. I will be at home tomorrow. Have game at eight nine, so we have time tomorrow to focus. And I will watch the game as a fan. Of course, I want to watch it. If you give me the result, I would love to, <laughs> you know, United take points. But uh, what's going to change if we don't do our job the next next game and after next game and next game? So I'm going to watch as a fan what they can do, if we can learn something, improve something for both teams, and, and that's all. Hi, Pep. I, I, I know you had Liverpool and you're going to have Brighton and Watford, and I don't know if you had time to project the Real Madrid semi-final yet. Not yet. I saw the game against Sevilla, but I was at home, but, uh, but no, no. So I don't have time. So I know, I know. So you have one week off. I have time to to see different situations. But that was Brighton after Liverpool. Would Would you at least expect a different uh, type of game than Atletico? I'm not going to answer against Madrid. I'm focusing Brighton. Next week I'll ask you the same question. Eh? I will prepare it. Mm -hmm. I'll my, my name on Zoom, please, Mike, if you can hear us. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. You mentioned him in, in passing there, but I was following a little bit more on, on Nathan Ake and how he's really stepped into the centre-back role in the last couple of games in the absence of Ruben and the absence of Amari Paul and how he's how he's developed as a player. He's so reliable, uh, and especially when you behave in your life like he behaves always, you are going to play good and you have to reward what you deserve. When it's a guy like like never put a bad face and always playing and always helping and always is a guy like uh, he's an exceptional person. Uh, his mother her, and of course his father passed away in the heaven, so he has to be so proud. He's an exceptional person, and uh, you know as a football player he show. And when these type of people that they don't get maybe the minutes that they deserve, and after he got the minutes and do what he done, just because he felt that. When you are in that way, always thinking you know, to help to the other ones, to the other ones, to the other ones, and at the end, the situation is going well. As much older I get, more more I aware in these kind of behaviors and feelings, and your life is better. This is what you spoke about before, that the, the living your life for football 24-7, you mentioned it of Ruben, you mentioned it of John Stones recently as well, and, and Nathan, does that, when you sign a player, or, or when your, your scouts are looking at players, is that something you really want them to focus on, how much dedication I get, I guess they've got to do again? I completely agree with you. The scouting, they should take a look a lot of these kind of behaviours, absolutely. Football is not a, just a skill, it's just one part. But the other part is more, much more important. Absolutely. Um, finally, from me, um, Liam, just on the striker issue, Liam Delap, did get any minutes on, on Saturday in the FA Cup? Is he close? Is he an option for the remainder of the season if you needed that 
different outlook from? Well, I was training with the Asimir is an option, but you know that the young player has to make a step when to be helped, you know, to, to when the situation is more comfortable and many, many reasons. So, but you cannot forget Liam was five or six months injured, start last month playing regularly in the in the second team and it's important because now he feels really, really better, much, much better. Okay, we'll move